we actually don't need to use a noise source to calibrate the PNA. We can use a power meter in a special power meter method. This is particularly useful at higher frequencies where the accuracy of the noise sources start to degrade. So now I'm going to lead you through the calibration for noise figure only using the power meter and not using the noise source. So we start with the smart cal. Again, we're going to use the scalar noise calibration, but this time we're going to be using the power meter. And you can see we're set up. The power sensor is set to be the same as the port one because that's where we're going to connect it. And now we're going to measure with the power meter. Here I'm switching my switch setup that I have for my remote calibration to have power meter at port three. I'm ready to take the measurement and you'll see it set up the power meter and start the power meter measurement. Here we're nearly done with the first pass of the power meter at the 7 to 10 gigahertz range, but it's going to do another power meter calibration or measurement at the output frequency range because it has to capture both the input and output power to get the right loss of the converter. And finally the power meter step is done and we're going to go on to connecting port 1 to port 2. After changing the, to a through connection, I'm doing the measurements. So now it's measuring the loss going through the power meter. It's going to do several measurements where it's going to be changing the attenuator states internally to capture the through loss of each of the attenuator states. It needs to drive the power quite low in order to not overdrive the noise receiver. And during this through state, we're going to be measuring both the cold and hot power meter measurement. And finally, we're going to do these measurements where we're going to measure the bandwidth of the uh, noise receiver in this next step. What you see it doing now is measuring the actual receiver bandwidth. And for noise measurements, we have to have both an accurate measurement of the gain of the receiver and the bandwidth of the receiver. Using the uh, noise source, it combines the two together. So a measurement of noise power is a measurement of both, uh, or a VNR is a measurement of both the gain and bandwidth combined together. But when we use the power meter method, we measure the bandwidth independently of the gain. It's done on the same measurement. And one of the things you do notice is a little zero in the center of this filter. This is the IF response of the noise receiver. And because we have a, a little bit of DC term, uh, we use a DC zero in the receiver's filter to make sure that the DC doesn't get any, give us any offset in the noise power measurement. If you had some markers on this, you would be able to see that the bandwidth is the equivalent bandwidth of 4 megahertz, which I've set up for this measurement. All right, nearly finished. Normally 201 points is a lot more than you would do for a noise figure measurement across a band of frequencies. And uh, during this final step, we're going to take the ECAL and put it between the ports. And this will do our match correction as well as do the pulling of our noise receiver to remove the noise parameter effects of the uh, port 2 receiver. Okay, our ECAL is now connected, so we'll do some ECAL measurements. And during these measurements where you see the Smith chart, we're actually pulling our own internal noise receiver with an impedance tuner to try and generate an offset calibration or a, a measurement of the noise parameters or how the noise of our internal receiver changes with the impedance of the output device. Finally, we'll save this cal set away. Save it as a power meter noise figure measurement. And I'll be able to compare this calibration to the one we did using the um, uh, using the um, noise source. So here we've got the calibration, the mixer cal. Let's go ahead and stick this into memory on both of these measurements. Be sure to memorize both the traces. Show data and memory on both the traces. And now I can switch the cal set as easy as choosing the CalSet using the uh, noise source as a calibration. Select CalSet, say OK, and we can see the comparisons. And you can see that they compare really, really well. The gain comparison is identical. The noise figure, 
there's a little bit of deviation in the noise figure measurement, but it's very, very close. It's almost, uh, really almost too small to even account. I went back and did a calibration using the vector calibration method, and this is the scalar cal results. We can see this ripple. If I go switch that cal set to the vector calibration that I just did, uh, VNFA cal, and take a sweep, we should see an improvement uh, due to improving the uh, effective match. Now, remember that some of this ripple might still be due to the fact that I have that switching matrix in there, or switching network, and so uh, my calibration with the eCal is not really perfect compared to the input port of the converter because it is on the uh, other leg of the switch with a slightly different cable, but we see a big improvement, or uh, it was small ripple before, but we see a big improvement in the ripple. One of the other features that we can do with the vector cal is we can add some new capabilities. For example, we can find the minimum noise figure and also the gamma opt. Let's turn on the minimum noise figure trace, and it's a little jaggedy. That happens because we don't have a lot of tuner states, but we can see that uh, some of that ripple associated with the um, measurement of the noise figure is a little lower, and that's probably indicating that we haven't quite achieved a perfect 50 ohm match with our original eCal because of the difference in the cables. So minimum noise figure and noise figure in 50 ohms, or noise figure in the calibration impedance.